Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. So a lot of you guys did like that first part we did on the 2006 Honda Accord, not an 05 uh, with the 3 liter where we did a little bit of playing around with the uh, Pico Scope, the WPS 500 in cylinder pressure transducer and having a look at a known bad engine. Uh, did get criticized here and there about overkill diagnosing but it wasn't the diagnosis procedure to diagnose this particular car I would have used. It's one I chose to use. We could have used a regular mechanical gauge, leak down test, or you know, things diagnosed five minutes out of the door. However, we used it uh, because when we get broken cars, we'd like to gather the data. So when we get broken cars that uh, you know, special circumstances don't allow us to get to the valve covers quickly to you know verify cam timing you know what are these known bad waveforms looking like what can we learn from them because there's going to be situations where that is the absolute best option and it's good to practice uh, to learn you know on good engines on bad engines and that way you can build your library you can build your noodle and kind of you know hypothesize what's going on especially on a car like this when we know hey it's still number five got the exhaust valve what can we learn from those waveforms uh, and it got down to the point where I couldn't learn a ton from the running compression waveform. And I kind of, uh, you know, kind of beat myself up around it and looking at it, you know, geez, you know, I've taken a couple classes on these. But in those classes, they always tended to show just catastrophic failures, broken valve springs, you know, cam timing off 40, 50 degrees, you know, stuff that was blatantly obvious that really stuck out, you know, non-functioning valves, you know, worn cam lobes, stuff that was, it just stuck out like a sore thumb. You're like, oh yeah, look, there's no intake event. There's, you know, uh, you know, there's two humps. There's, you know, obviously there's no exhaust valve opening, you know, stuff like that. It was pretty clear to see. So when I get cars like this, uh, with slight misfires at idle, I like to look at them. I uh, just did a Subaru not too long ago that had excessive, or I shouldn't say excessive, but the uh, exhaust um, rocker arm, or I guess shim under, you know, shim under bucket style, there was no exhaust clearance, no valve clearance, it was zero, zero clearance. You could see it on a Pico. Exhaust valve opened early, closed late, you know, tolerance was too tight. Made that call quicker than you could pull the valve cover off. Remove one spark plug, make the call. Why is this car skipping? Had spark, had fuel, had compression. So, uh, you know, translates all into a breathing problem and valve timing. So on this one, I couldn't really see, on the exception of a lower, or not as deep vacuum pocket, not as much as, uh, you know, a little more pressure on that cylinder that went down to like, I don't know, 17 inches versus 19 inches of vacuum versus, you know, no good cylinder. However, one thing really stuck out on the cranking waveforms, and I didn't give it a whole lot of thought. Um, you know, I was kind of pondering, you know, why is it doing this? Why are those other two cylinders low on the front? Cam timing's on, cam timing looks good. Uh, but a viewer, Stephen Stacy, or Steve Stacy, uh, inspired me to think a little bit more and take a closer look at the cranking waveforms. I'm gonna pin his comment at the top of the very first video so you guys can read that. I'll try to pop it up here on the screen, give you a minute to read through that makes a fantastic point um, and something I'm just like, oh geez, you know, you know, you ever have one of those, I guess was epiphanies, I guess, you know, an aha moment where you're like, oh geez, you know, I really had to think about this and, you know, it starts all fitting together. So I'm going to try to explain a little bit what we see in the cranking waveform. Now, keep in mind, I am not an expert on in-cylinder pressure transducer testing at all, um, but we're going to just look at the data we have, see if we can't make sense of it, and then make a hypothesis on why the other two cylinders are low based on the cranking waveforms. So we'll try to draw it up over here on the whiteboard of knowledge. This is uh, going to be our cylinder. So we'll just start with black. I am just kind of winging this so hopefully we can represent it well, but we're going to say this is our cylinder. All right, I guess we have to draw some valves. So we're going to call this our exhaust valve, and that's our intake valve, and then our pressure transducer here. All right, so I think the best thing to do is to start with our piston at bottom dead center. So our piston is down here. So there's our piston. Our piston's at bottom dead center. The intake event has already happened. Um, let's say, you know, 
we're cranking this, all right? So when we're cranking it, we know that our waveform is collected at wide open throttle. So our intake manifold vacuum should be atmospheric pressure. So this cylinder is charged with a certain volume of air at atmospheric pressure. So in theory, this piston's gonna go up, it's gonna compress that volume of air, and then it's gonna drag that, the crankshaft's gonna drag that piston back down, because remember there's no combustion event taking place. So when that drags it back down, assuming there is no leak, our waveform, let's say this is our scope, this is zero PSI, so we're starting at atmospheric pressure. As that piston travels up, our waveform should go up in pressure to you know, whatever it is, let's say, you know, 200 PSI, just for the sake of saying something, goes up to 200 PSI. Theoretically, if none of that air charge was lost, when that piston is dragged back down to bottom dead center, it should be back at atmospheric pressure, in theory, if an engine is sealed 100% tight, which it isn't. Um, you know, I don't know any engines that are. So we'll take erase our waveform here. So now let's think about this. If we're cranking, same conditions. Intake event has happened. The cylinder is completely charged with uh, atmospheric pressure in its full volume. The volume of that cylinder never changes as that piston goes up and down and that's something to keep in mind. That cylinder volume never changes. It always stays the same. Up, down, the volume of air can change though and that's what we can see on our waveform. So let's say this piston goes up and as that piston's coming up, hope you guys still with me. We erase some of this here. So let's say our piston's going up, and let's say we're you know we're here at TDC, and all of that air is compressed, and. For example, we have a leaky exhaust valve. Now some of that air volume, the initial volume, the initial charge that we took in has escaped out that exhaust valve. Our graph is still gonna look the same. We started at atmospheric pressure, cranking, wide open throttle. Our graph goes up, we're at TDC, our peak pressure, I guess it would be, can't really call it TDC, our, our pressure has peaked. We come up, now when that piston starts to travel back down, Remember, some of this air volume has escaped out that exhaust valve while it was being compressed. So what should our graph look like as this piston travels back down to the bottom, assuming both valves are closed? So let's say our piston has now come all the way back to the bottom, and our volume of air that was in there a little bit of that has escaped. The initial charge, the initial you know, air mass that was in there has escaped, but our cylinder volume stayed the same. Well, what's going to happen is, got to have a connecting rod. When that piston comes down, some of our air volume has escaped out the exhaust valve. The volume of our cylinder, max capacity has not changed, but our air charge has changed. So as that piston gets down, and let's say just hypothetically, you know, once it gets here, you know, our initial air charge has changed. So once that piston gets down there, now all of a sudden there's less air. So it comes up, goes all the way down. But when that piston comes down a little bit more, instead of going back to our baseline, because there's less volume in that cylinder, it's gonna dip it into a little bit of a vacuum. And then we're gonna have an exhaust event, you know, somewhere is over here. And then because we're at wide open throttle, we're gonna go right back to our zero PSI until this process starts over again, it comes up. A little bit of that air charge is lost when that piston is dragged back down because there's not the initial air charge in there. It's going to go back below that zero line. Exhaust vent will happen or the pressure will equalize either back through the in exhaust valve or wherever the leak may be and then back to zero PSI. I hope that helps explain it. I think I have another process that we can use for some of you guys who are like me or visual learners. Um, I like to be able to read something, see something try it out, you know, see if I can help make sense of it. So let me see if I can set up another little rig here to kind of help explain that for some of our more visual learning folks. All right, so hopefully we can see this. So we're gonna 
uh, try to demonstrate this using just a simple pressure gauge and a big syringe. Now we're gonna, this is gonna be very similar to our cylinder. This volume inside this is fixed, just like our piston is. Um, I should probably grease this up a little. I sprayed a little fluid film in it. So when we take in this volume of air and we compress it, come all the way up, compress it where we want, essentially, if there's no leaks when we go back to where we started, the, volume, the air volume or the pressure inside here should go right back to where it started. So let's say we came up here, we compress it to 30, and our pressure goes up to whatever, but let's say our exhaust valve you know, leaked out there just a little bit. When we come back down where we started, now all of a sudden we're pulling a vacuum in here because our initial air charge is gone. And I think we can represent that on a gauge here. So first we can represent, our little cricket has joined in over there. I'm gonna go, let's say I'm gonna go from 30 milliliters up to probably 35, or we'll go from, from 60 to 30. All right, let me just make sure we don't have any leaks here. So we'll neutralize our, our gauge. So there's our gauge, that's our zero point. All right, I'm gonna zoom you guys in on that. Don't mind the ambiance of the cricket. So we're gonna go from 60 milliliters up to 30, we're gonna hold it. And then we're gonna go back to 60. So back to 60, we're back to where we start. And then that piston's gonna go back up, you know, back up to TDC and then back down to bottom dead center and our pressure stays equalized and you know we then you know this is this is hypothesis or this is you know theoretically saying this is a perfectly sealed cylinder this piston goes up you know piston comes back down you know piston goes up you know our pressure steady you know comes back down and we're back to where we start we're back to zero psi so and you can envision that on that waveform you know that's just that steady up steady down starts at zero ends at zero our waveform's not doing that on number five. I'm gonna show you a picture of that. So what, what we just looked at over there on, you know, drawing our picture, let's say we bring this up, you know, so our piston is at top dead center, that volume of air is compressed. Now here is our exhaust leak. Let's say a little bit of that air leaks out. All right, so a little bit of that air charge leaked out. Now when I bring it right back down, there's our zero mark, but our piston is not at bottom dead center yet. You know, our piston is right here. Now what happens when we go back to that 60 milliliters or back to bottom dead center, it dips it into a little bit of a vacuum. So I hope that makes sense. I'll zoom out and show you guys. So we'll neutralize our, our gauge again. We'll put our piston or our pretend piston here at bottom dead center. Now this is only during the compression and expansion stroke. So, you know, we're not looking at all four cycles of an engine here. This is just that one hump in the waveform. All right, so we go all the way up. You know, our cylinder, our cylinder is sealed, holds pressure. We go back down, bottom dead center, back to where we started. So let's go back up, piston stop dead center. A little bit of our air volume is going to escape here. A little bit of air volume escapes. In our case, the exhaust valve. Now that piston is traveling back down. Our graph is on that downward slope. Goes down, down, down. We're back at zero, but we're just a little bit off bottom dead center. When that piston gets dragged back to bottom dead center, our gauge goes into a vacuum. And that's exactly what we're seeing on number five. Now let's have a look at that waveform. All right, again, all the links are in the description where you guys can download the software to look at these yourself and these exact files that I captured. So here's the number one cylinder. Here's a cylinder. Uh, we'll look at just, we'll look at an event here and we can see the cylinder is charged with intake manifold air. Let's get a zero PSI mark on here. And this is stuff you guys can play with too. Free of charge. So there's our zero PSI. There's our atmospheric air right here at the bottom. That cylinder is charged with that air. It goes up, it compresses it. The crankshaft drags it all the way back down in the expansion stroke. And you can see right here, it just barely dips below that zero PSI line when that piston hits bottom dead center uh, before it gets to that you know exhaust opening event this cylinder I would say by looking at it is sealed quite well all right so that's cylinder number one now let's look at have a look at cylinder number five here we'll take we'll zoom in on an event here we'll get our zero psi line 
So there's our zero PSI line. Now we see a big difference here. So that piston is that atmospheric air right here, zero PSI, because we're wide open throttle. No manifold vacuum to uh, be in the dominant pressure. So it comes up, that air, that volume of air that was introduced into that piston at bottom dead center is being compressed. It hits its peak pressure, but remember at this point or somewhere through this travel, some of that air volume has escaped out that exhaust valve. So both valves are closed. Now that piston's being dragged back down by the crankshaft. And as it's dragged down, that volume of air is used up, just like we talked about, just like when we were pulling that syringe back down. Now it's hit the zero PSI mark, but that piston's still moving. And here it is, it's being dragged you know, back down. Let's throw up some, let's see where our pistons are at just for the sake of demonstration, because we want to know, you know where, where are my pistons? So we'll set up some markers there. We're gonna want four of these. All right, so this is top dead center. This is bottom dead center, or I guess it's safe enough to call this. It's close enough to top dead center. It's the peak of our pressure. So, and then this is bottom dead center. So between here and here, that piston is still in that downward stroke. So as it comes down, it's coming down, coming down. Well, somewhere, you know, we got a exhaust valve opening event about 30 degrees when I looked at it on a running compression, about 30 degrees before bottom dead center, that exhaust valve opens. So we can see that. It's probably going to be right about where that hump is. So we'll set up a cursor there. And then we'll come about approximately 30 degrees. So the exhaust opening event is right about in this area there. Now let's zoom in on this. And we can see our pressure starts to kind of go up here. Now whether that um, is you know escaping back through the exhaust valve or it's because you know the exhaust valve opening event I'm not hundred percent certain but one thing we can be certain on is that piston is in its downward travel it's lost its charge in the cylinder obviously because our compression is lower and then it's dragged it into a negative pressure I hope this is all making sense so what we can do now is let's have a look at it. so that's one or that's number five now we'll go back through our, our files. Remember one, two, and three were good. So we'll just take a peek here at cylinder number two. So here's cylinder number two. We'll jump back a frame. And we see a little, a little tiny dip there at the bottom of cylinder number two. Not, not too bad. Like I say, no engine seals perfectly. So a little bit of that cylinder charge is lost. All right, so it was cylinder two, and then cylinder three was also, you know, one that had good compression. Probably should add all these open so we didn't have to wait. What we can see here on cylinder number three, real similar to cylinder number one, little tiny dip there. But now if we look at our front bank, we've already seen five, so we're gonna open four. And I guess we can get number six opening also. See who opens first here. So this is cylinder number six. Now remember when we looked at our relative compression, these were a little bit lower than the rear cylinders. And what do we see here? We see on that expansion stroke that it does pull a little bit of vacuum, a little more so than the rear cylinders. So that's cylinder six. And here is cylinder number four, same thing. You know, we've got a little bit more of a vacuum on that expansion stroke. more so than, than the rear cylinders. All right guys, well I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, thanks again Steve for getting my wheels turning, helping me think. I hope that perhaps this test and a little bit of the whiteboard uh, helps explain what I think that we're seeing and what Steve is talking about in our cranking waveform. Um, is it safe to say that you know we can use that cranking waveform to see if that cylinder is losing charge during cranking? I I think so. <laughs> you know, there are so many variables nowadays with, uh, you know, the variable cam timing and, you know, all these different cam profiles and overlap and all that stuff. You know, it is something you have to keep in mind now. I did want to try to find, did try to find the camshaft specs for this car. You know, how many degrees before bottom dead center does the, the you know, exhaust valve open, exhaust valve close, you know, intake valve open, intake valve close. I found the specs for a 2000 3.0. 
a little bit different, different compression ratio and stuff on this, and I didn't want to trust that data. Uh, otherwise, we could overlay all of that information right on our waveform and see the exact moment when that uh, you know event occurs, and then you know make you know make good assumptions off there. And I guess what I'm getting at, those front three banks all had a little deeper vacuum pocket while cranking. So is it safe to assume that the lower compression on that front head is due to air charge loss in that cylinder? And I guess knowing what we know on number five, I my hypothesis would be yes all three of those banks or all three cylinders on that bank are losing a charge out of valve. Uh, can I tell you which valve based on that? I can't, um, at least right offhand, until somebody tells me something different. Um, I would love to be able to sit down with a guy like Bernie and have him show me like, here, look at this, look at this, did you see this? You know, that would be, that would be my dream. Uh, you know, he's the, he's the OG, he's the guy who invented this stuff. <laughs> so. Anyhow, we'll keep learning, we'll keep learning together. Thanks again, Steve, for getting my wheels turning, making me use my noodle. Thank all you other viewers who put in all your input um, on this video, and I'm really happy to see how the file sharing thing is going. Again, links in the description. Let me know what you thought about this, how you liked the, the demonstration, my gauge, my leaky exhaust valve, best I can come up with. And uh, yeah, I know I'm a piss poor artist, but we do the best we can. All right, guys, got to get home. Questions, comments, criticisms in the comment box below. Find us where you can find us. Check us out on Patreon. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.